little bit alive. The stick charges come out. Miracle is not even going to die once. They've lost four on LGD. Liquid only losing Kuro, and that... This snowballed out of control so quickly. It was, like you said, a 5k gold advantage not even five, six minutes ago. It has gone up to a 15k. LGD runs into the pit, gets demolished by Matumba Man. Oh my goodness, this this could just well be the game, Owen. I mean, we said it was looking close to the start, but as you say, this game has just fallen off incredibly for LGD. Liquid just finding these sweet spots to jump in and abuse the team fight that they brought, the itemization, as you say, just leaving LGD no hope whatsoever in these team fights. As the mid racks is down, 20k lead for Liquid, they move to a second set of racks. And here they go, the Int stacking up with a Hurricane Pike from Miracle. This is definitely the second Rex. LGD unable to do anything versus this lineup now. They're going to port in. This They've is got to last do effort. Big. They are going to try. Jump in straight away, but Matumba Man just posts the BKB. Chalice leading on to Miracle, but GH is there with the tether, keeping Miracle alive. Sanity's Eclipse dropped down onto X Nova. He's down. Arme gets picked apart as well. Chalice to fall. Double kill for Miracle. And G, G, is G is called. It's all too much for LGD as Liquid beat down upon them in incredible fashion and secure themselves another Victory here at Star Ladder as Liquid are your Star Ladder I League Season 4 champions. They've defended their titles how many times now in a row? Three times or so? Liquid, Matu really just turned it up a notch in this game. The rest of his teammates were kind of seven, but him and Mind Control just salvaged it completely. Those big fights, the primal splits getting off every single time. LGD just. It actually just snowballed completely out of control. It really did. I mean, we saw here today in this land final short, sure, LGD had that one game where they had this strat, they executed it flawlessly, but the other three games, the other three losses to Liquid, it just never was quite there for LGD. A little bit of a glimmer of hope in that last game, but there we have it, Kuroki lifting the cup. His 1,001 win, one game on his way towards those 2,000 wins that I'm sure will Inevitably see Kuro reach down the lifeline of his Matu career. has brought his shorts to play. He really has. Did LGD ever really stand a chance against this Finnish fashionista? I don't know, but it was it was damn well played by this one. It looked like a bit of a struggle in the laning phase, but they really took advantage of that Doom cooldown. They pressed forward, started using that advantage, started taking advantage of like Disruptor being that weak hero if you get ran at. And look at Matu, as always. That sweet celebration. He loves it. They love it. GH smiles all around, mind control. Miracle as ever, playing it cool. <laughs> Matu just absolutely owning the moment here on stage. As Liquid. They only dropped one game at this tournament, right? They really did. In the grand finals against LGD. Other than that, it's been smooth sailing from start to finish. More of those tasty Dota Pro circuit points in the bag for them as well. Of course, on top of the money. <laughs> Miracle's like, no, 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 I'm okay. <laughs> Just standing next to you guys is enough. He's not about that life. No. But well, well. There we have it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining myself and Fogs for this Grand Finals. Hats off, of course, to Team Liquid. Massive congratulations to them. Kudos to LGD for trying their best, but it just wasn't quite enough at the end of the day as Team Liquid are your Star Ladder I-League Season 4 champions. Again, that is right, the multi-champion Team Liquid, they have won last season. They won the season before that, and more Star Ladder events for that. Uh, so they are undisputed, the Star Ladder champion, Star Ladder Our League Invitational champion for this one, season four. They take the trophy once more, and in what fashion? I mean, they gave LGD one game, or rather LGD took one game by force, but in the end, it was Team Liquid that was victorious. Capitalist, Flex. I guess, you know, we talked about this before the whole series began and we did doubt 
our own uh, predictions a little bit, you know, after that second game. But in the end, it is still Team Liquid coming out victorious, Cap. Yeah, absolutely was. It's uh, Liquid Star Ladder, man. Her name's just written on this tournament. I yeah. think that um, Liquid was easily the strongest team going into this tournament, barring Newbie. Newbie obviously not showing the same form that no. they showed at ESL1 Genting, being taken out by LGD. So that really left like a very clear opening for Liquid just to be able to clean up this up and make this their tournament once again. Yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, I had him as 3-0 for Liquid, which yep. may have yep. been a little... A little, a little unkind to LGD. I think they showed some, some, uh, some nice touches throughout the tournament. They definitely have some good players, but yeah. I'm not quite sure about their drafting in the final. There were a few, a couple of games that really went. Apart from the surprise draft, which I thought was great. I think yeah. the rest of them were kind of a little bit flimsy. It kind of felt like you know they they won that one game. It's like okay, this is what we need to do, and they tried to find variations on it. And I think, didn't yeah, work. I think that's right. And I, I think, you know, throughout the tournament, we've seen a lot of people, a lot of Medusas and PLs and stuff like that. People had that late game carry to make room for. Yeah. And I feel like the cores that they were making room for still weren't necessarily going to get them where they needed to be. Uh, so I feel like in that final, I think there's too much damage coming out of Liquid. And it was just indicative of the, the final as a whole. I thought yeah. Liquid just outthought them and outplayed them in the end. Yeah, I think the best comparison is to compare this to game number two where game two, we had a lineup from Liquid that was a lot slower. We talked about in the yeah. draft where they had the Lone Druid. This time around, they have the Gyrocopter, very important, and then the Wisp. I think that it's really difficult, even if they did have the same pushing heroes that LGD had in game number one, it was going to be very difficult for them to be able to close out this game against Liquid, against the Wisp. And yeah. it's not just the Wisp, but it's what they're paired up with, right? Because they've got Brewmaster and Gyrocopter. You pretty much are guaranteeing that Liquid is going to win some of these team fights. Yeah. And with a single core lineup based around Lycan, you can't afford to really miss any of your team fights. You have to win all of them. Like, if you think about, like, how many team fights does LGD have to win to end the game? It's like 10. You know, they, yeah. like, they have to win fight after fight, grind their way through towers. And Liquid's really good at being able to draw out games. Yeah. They just didn't have the lineup to do that in game number two because they had no fighting power. But in game number four, they absolutely did. They were constantly forcing fights onto LGD. So it was very rare that we saw a shapeshift be utilized for a team fight and then pushed into a tower, right? It was almost every single time they had to use shapeshift. Maybe they would win the fight, but they wouldn't really take objectives off of that. And that naturally slows down the game. I think the big part about winning fights is that it's not necessarily just about killing the enemy heroes, but what it costs you to do it and whether you're then ready to get anything after it. Right? Yeah. Because yeah. a lot of the time in these fights, even if they t came out okay, they were all having to limp back to base. They weren't able to do anything as it is. And like Cap said, Shapeshift had been used. I think, I mean, it's, it's, it's an okay lineup, I think. It's just a Puck, I don't think, really does much for them. I think he's okay. I think the Ogre... You know, it was okay, but if you look at Liquid's lineup, I think the Wisp and Powers things so well. The Brew has just been like one of the heroes of the tournament, really. Yeah. OD and Gyro are just too strong, when, and they got there before LGD could really do anything about it. But they, they look pretty relaxed and casual, don't they, Liquid? They they knew what they're doing. He I mean, is they, saying, they know what, you what guys like did exactly win, what they know? told you to do. Yeah. They seem very comfortable in victory. Yeah, they did, <laughs> they did seem comfortable. If you yeah. saw like... Um, what was it? The beginning of this game, um, LGD was very far up when it came to the initial net worth. They were winning all of their lanes, basically, because the Gyro Wisp couldn't really threaten the Lycan very well. Then they had the mid matchup, um, the Puck versus Brewmaster, which Puck was doing very well for himself. Yeah, they were definitely winning in the farm. And the yeah, and then the aggro lane going into um, Miracle's OD. Miracle was very underfarmed, had a hard time. Yep. But you, uh, you always had a feeling because, again, because the Gyrocopter is still kind of free farming and they have a Brewmaster, Liquid's going to win some fights, yeah. just right? Wasn't enough. Yeah, yeah, you could force 10 fights. Liquid only needs to win like two or three of yeah. them to be able to keep the game even because they're always going to split push you. You yeah. don't really have any wave clear from LGD to be able to do that. It was very reminiscent of almost a complexity S draft where they're mm -hmm. trying to fight around a single core lineup yeah, that yeah. pushes very early and it just forces fights. Yeah. And unfortunately, LGD... I'm not sure if you could play well enough in the world to beat no. Liquid with a single core lineup and just like wipe them but, team fight after team fight. I mean, sure, Liquid deserving to be the champion here, 
Absolutely. Uh, LGD though, I mean, this is a new squad. This is a fresh squad, like not even a month old in this I would say generation. worthy runners up. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think they, they did well over the course of the tournament. Yeah. Um, of the other teams that didn't make it here, I think Mineski maybe Ooh. disappointed a little bit. Yeah, but, but I thought well, they could have been second, but they did. They lost to Liquid, right? They so, did. But they pushed them very, very close. So I think maybe a Mineski Liquid final might have been a better matchup, but I do think LGD yeah. did well to get this far. Yeah, they're definitely a team to, to look out for. Best moment of the tournament for you, Kat? Uh, best moment was definitely the game two, Mineski versus Liquid. Watch in it. fact, both those series, um, both the games in that series were very good from yeah. a strategic outlook. Um, this is where Mineski matched up really well against Liquid, where LGD definitely fell a bit short. Their drafting and their concepts of strategy did not, they just looked out of their depth against Liquid. Um, they found one thing that worked for them, and as Ted said, tried variations of that. Um, and that was not going to be enough. Whereas you saw Mineski tried two different kind of strategies against Liquid, um, going up against a terrible late push lineup as well as the um, as well as the Lone Druid, and found different pacings to be able to yeah. uh, to go toe to toe with Liquid pretty easily. Best moment for you, Ted? Um, it was probably a bit of a goofy one, but the Mineski comeback against Kinguin from oh, Mega Creeps sure. I thought was you fun. You know what? Both of you are voting for Mineski games then. Yeah, that's true. Mineski board a lot of entertainment. Yeah. I, I did. I don't I mean, think I'll ever underrate Maneski again. Um, oh. I think that's what I learned from this tournament. Again, because of the fact that their C brothers were taking some games off of Maneski, winning series against them, um, and then their relatively underwhelming showing at ESO and Genting, I thought maybe they aren't going to be enough here, but they definitely proved me wrong. They did indeed. It has been an impressive showing from a lot of teams, but there can only be one champion, and that is Team Liquid. And, of course, Kuroki has now got 1,001 wins 1001. to his name. First in professional Dota 2. You guys, that was it. It's been our pleasure bringing you all the Dota 2 action here from Shanghai. It has been uh, four weeks filled with Awesome Dota. And again, go watch that game. Liquid vs. Mineski, game two of the semifinals. That is a worthy watch if you missed it. Even if you already know the result, it's Commentary fine. was great, too. <laughs> Commentary was great, Let me too. guess, Cap. <laughs> Very modest as well. No, it has been our pleasure to bring everything uh, to you, all the action, all the Dota, and all the, the fun we had in between. But uh, but that was it. You know, there's this is season four. There's going to be uh, hopefully a season five as well, and we hope to welcome you back for that. From all of us here in Shanghai, production, talent, everybody involved, wish you a good evening. <laughs>